Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. So now that we've addressed the common diagnostic steps for diagnosing osteoarthritis in cats, we need to move on to treatment to help manage our cats that are dealing with arthritis pain. So join me, you'll learn something today. Now we have less research for our cats than we do for our dogs. Cats are absolutely not small dogs. They're very different species. However, when we don't have any research on the cat species specifically, we do the best we can with the information we have available for other species. Now the specific treatment options for your cat will vary based on your ability to give medications to your cat. I did do a video on how to teach this. You can find that in the video description. It will also depend on your cat's temperament, your ability to consider things like injections over oral medications, what your budget is, what your schedule is, and so on. I'm just going to cover some of the most research-based and common treatment options we have. The treatment plan must be multimodal. All cats require that. Early and aggressive intervention is key. We want to catch any joint pain as quickly as we possibly can because the better we're managing it, the less muscle mass they're going to lose, the less their quality of life is going to suffer, and that will help them to maintain range of motion, muscle mass, activity levels, and their quality of life for longer. If there are any other disease processes that could be contributing to the formation of osteoarthritis, like hip dysplasia or patella luxation and so on, those must be addressed first. Now, we don't have any research in the cat species showing that them being overweight causes arthritis. However, the extra weight will increase the forces on their joints and abnormal forces on joints will make those joints more painful. So if your cat is a body condition score of six, seven, eight, or nine, getting them to lose weight and get down to a body condition score of five out of nine is so very important. Reducing the forces that they need to put on their joints will enable them to use their joints better and to experience less pain when they do things like playing and jumping. Healthy weight loss for cats was actually one of the first videos that I did. It's particularly tricky for cats as they can mobilize fat to their liver and get a hepatic lipidosis if weight loss is done poorly. So make sure that you check out the video I did on feline weight loss before attempting to get your cat to lose any weight. The intervention that we have the most research on for controlling chronic arthritis pain in cats is using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Hands down, this is the the most research-based intervention we have. We even have more recent studies showing that using NSAIDs in cats that have kidney function issues is generally safe. And we also need to think about how quality of life is much, much, much more important than the quantity of life for the cat. It is unfair not to treat their pain due to a concern for potential organ function changes. However, especially in the US for some reason, there is this real hesitancy about using NSAIDs in cats over the long term. As we get more research in this area, it's truly showing how we can safely use NSAIDs long term in senior cats. Using NSAIDs is an absolutely key intervention for your cat. If your veterinarian will not prescribe NSAIDs for your cat, you need to see another veterinarian. It is not acceptable to leave your cat painful. You absolutely must discuss with your veterinarian how you understand there can be some risks with using NSAIDs, but that the quality of life for your cat is the most important consideration here. That is the key takeaway. We did discuss in the canine arthritis video how Adequan can be used 
in order to help support the cartilage in the joints and to improve the quality of the joint fluid. This essentially means that there are better cushions between the bones in your cat's joints. Now, there isn't research in cats for Adequan. However, using it off-label for cats is done all the time. That being said, the body of research on Adequan isn't entirely conclusive, so this is an adjunct medication, but for some cats, if it's helpful, it can be a very useful one to use. Generally, you start by giving the injections twice a week for a month, and then you wean down to once a month. It will depend on how your cat responds to the Adequan injections. And so you'll need to discuss if Adequan is an appropriate choice for your cat or not. Your veterinarian can help to guide you. For cats, we also do have a newer product called Silencia. It is an anti-nerve growth factor monoclonal antibody designed for the feline species. This class of medication inter interrupts pain signals and so your cat feels less pain. It is a monthly injection and many cats respond very well to it. As it is a newer medication, we don't have research about how this medication is going to do over the long term, but the information we do have at this point is very promising. We can also use gabapentin and pregabalin for cats. This can be a helpful option because the longer pain exists in the body, the more likely there is that a neuropathic component develops. Gabapentin and pregabalin are commonly used for chronic pain for for that reason. Now, it may not be successful for all cats, but it is an option to discuss. Buprenorphine is an opioid-like medication that we can use for pain. It can be very helpful for cats. For chronic pain, we also have amantadine. This can be incredibly beneficial for some cats, so you can discuss it as a possibility with your veterinarian. Tramadol actually seems to be able to help with pain for cats. Our dogs aren't able to metabolize tramadol to use it for pain, but our cats do seem to be able to. The problem with tramadol is that it can be quite bitter, and for that reason, it tends not to be used all that often. NSAIDs are the first go-to intervention to consider when we need to add medication for pain management. It's as the arthritis progresses that we then start to add in additional medication options to the NSAIDs. This leads us next to the world of supplements. The supplement with the most most research behind it for cat arthritis pain are omega fatty acids. The fatty acids bind in the cell membrane and help to prevent inflammatory pathways. Now this does take a couple months, so adding omega fatty acids will not have an immediate effect on your cat's comfort, but it may be helpful over time. We do have a number of prescription joint diets that we can use. We have JD from Hills, and we also have Mobility from Royal Canin. These diets do have research behind them showing that they help with pain reduction. Now, there are going to be some cats that won't be able to switch to one of those diets for a variety of reasons. And so in that scenario, your veterinarian might recommend orally supplementing omega fatty acids. But this gets a little complicated because the nutraceutical industry is kind of a hot mess. And so what's on the label doesn't necessarily match what's inside the product. And we also rarely have bioavailability studies from the companies. So make sure to get a specific product recommendation from your veterinarian if you're going to be supplementing omega fatty acids. You may also gradually have to increase the dose as it can cause some GI upset or diarrhea, and there may be some cats that have other medical issues where it's not appropriate to add omega fatty acids, so make sure that you talk to your veterinarian before you start adding any supplement to your cat's diet. We also need to make certain that the omega fatty acids 
are from fish oil, krill, that sort of thing, as the vegetable-based omega fatty acids do not seem to be bioavailable for our cats. We have very little research on glucosamine and chondroitin for cats. In dogs, the research shows that glucosamine and chondroitin does not reduce pain. At the very best, maybe it's slowing down the arthritis formation, but even there, the jury's still out. We don't know for sure. Adding glucosamine and chondroitin for pain management is absolutely not acceptable. It's only a consideration as an adjunctive if you already have everything else implemented and you still have some budget to spare. I will have a number of resources for additional reading for you in the video description. I would love to hear from you about what has worked best for your cat or what you learned today. I do put out a new video most Fridays, and so I look forward to seeing you in the next one. All right, bye for now.